everybody. So today I want to talk to you about achieving your goals. So I know I've talked about weight loss goals and, and kind of been talking on those lines of how to achieve those kind of goals. Today I'm going to kind of take a curveball and kind of change that up. I'm just going to talk about goals in general, setting life goals and how we can achieve the ultimate goals uh, that we need to have in our life. So today I'm going to just start out by giving a verse of scripture from Colossians 3 and 17. It says, And whatsoever you, de you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. So, first of all, I want you guys to always remember everything that you're trying to achieve should be for the ultimate glory of God and His purpose and His will in your life. So, if you're struggling with, well, I don't know what kind of goals to set for my life, Always try to set goals that are going to glorify God and to uh, make Him and, and His kingdom uplifted. Um, so today we're going to be focusing around those kind of goals, around goals that are going to help you achieve your ultimate goal, which would be spreading the gospel to everyone around you and how we can do that. So uh, we're going to just talk about three different characters today. And um, I'm going to talk about what achievement really is. Achievement uh, is something that's done successfully. It is something that usually takes effort and is something that you usually use a skill to achieve. Um, so usually you'll use those components uh, in order to make an achievement in your life, to, to reach that goal that you're looking to reach. So we need to make sure that we're coming from a biblical standpoint and how we're going to do that is we're going to look at some biblical characters and we're just going to look at three of them today. And in Genesis it talks about a man named Noah and Noah, it says he walked with God. And so he ultimately was like this great guy that loved the Lord. Um, even though he didn't have like the Bible to look to, he just knew that there was a God and he knew that he loved God. But he was living in a very wicked, wicked time. And so God spoke to Noah and said that he was going to send the rains and he gave him the blueprints of how to build the ark. Now, when we talk about Noah and we talk about this story of Noah, what we have to remember is that Noah had to use five different things in order to achieve this ultimate goal. So the first thing that he had to do was obey. Obeying God and his will for your life is going to be one of the most important things to be able to achieve any goal that God wants in your life. Not only do you need to obey God, but you have to obey like your leadership and that kind of thing. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but obeying God is the main and should be the biggest priority in your life at all times. So obeying God was his first step. Not only did he have to obey, but he had to be courageous. Noah had to be courageous up against this wicked world. He was being mocked and made fun of. I mean, can you imagine in that time the wickedness and how he had to combat all those kind of horrible things that was being said about him? Um, so he was courageous. He was willing to go out on a limb, do what God said, and believe that God was going to do it. So that comes to my next point. He had faith in God that God would do it. So there's our third thing, is having faith that God will do what he says he will do. God will do what he says he's going to do. So if God uh, gives you something in your life and you're like, man, this is a goal I want to set my life, don't doubt that God's not going to be in it if you feel like he has given you that call. You have to believe it. You have to have faith that he's going to back you and be right there with you. So our next thing is effort. Noah had to give a lot of effort into building this huge ark. I mean, it had to house all these animals, his family. He had to take a lot of time to prepare, and he had to take a lot of time to do things. It took a lot of effort. It took Also, it took skill. So he had to use his skills in carpentry. He had to use his skills in gathering and, and um, getting enough food for him and his family. He had to do all this type of stuff. He had to use his skills. So those are our five things. He had to obey God. He had to um, be courageous against this wicked world. He had to have faith that God was going to do what he said he was going to do. He had to use his effort and his skills in order to obtain, obtain this huge goal and to fulfill God's purpose in his life. Now, 
let's talk about another character in Daniel, Daniel chapter 3. In Daniel chapter 3, we look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These three Hebrew boys were uh, not going to bow down to this idol, and they went against the king's demand because it was not in line with the word of God and what God had said to his people. Now that there is our obedience. They were obedient to God above all else, no matter the cost. They were obedient, and they were courageous to stand up to this king of all people. They were courageous. They were, they were taking the effort to, to not do what they want, this king wanted them to do. So, um, of course, everyone I'm hoping knows the story. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego did not bow down to the idol. They went with and were obedient to God's word. And they got thrown into the fiery furnace. But the Lord was faithful. They had faith that even if the Lord didn't decide not to, that he would get the glory. But they had faith that the Lord would take care of them. And he did in a miraculous way. He took care of them and he brought them back out of that fiery furnace. Not even with the smell of smoke on them is what the king said. So that right there shows that we have to have those same components, those same things, uh, just like uh, Noah did back in Genesis. So our third person in 1 Samuel 17 was David up against Goliath. I mean, if you think about David and Goliath, you think about courage. You think about someone who's ready to go and take charge. First, he was obedient to the word of God. He knew that God was able to do all things and do all things well. He knew that God, he had this faith, massive faith, that God would protect him, that he would overcome this, this enemy and take care of his people. So he had to have all these things. He had the obedience. He had the, the effort. I mean, he had to make a, a huge amount of effort. I mean, he tried on all the armor of the king and all that kind of stuff. He had to make this huge effort in order to go up against this uh, this Goliath, this giant. Uh, so, and he used his skills. I mean, while he was swinging that sling around, that was a skill. I know I cannot <laughs> use a sling and make it go where I want it to go. So that is a skill that he used. Now, how can we put this into our life? How can we make this our, like how we're gonna attain a goal for God? How are we gonna make this uh, what we need? to achieve a goal. So we're going to be talking about those five things. We're going to talk about obedience. We have to make sure that we are being obedient first to God, always checking the scripture, always making sure that we're dividing the scripture and making sure that we know what is in there, always making sure that we are in line with what God's will is for our lives through prayer and fasting. Uh, so we have to make sure first we're obeying God. We're obeying those that he puts in charge of us, um, whether that be your pastor or um, if, if maybe you're in Sunday school, Sunday school teacher, um, those spiritual leaders. Now we always line up with God's word. So if someone, if someone in your life is speaking something against God's word, like the king was with me, Shadrach, and Abednego, you go against it, obviously. But... If they are in line with God's words, you follow their, and you are obedient to their um, leadership, and you are um, put under them, just like the apostles had people that were down uh, under them. They had people that were working uh, and doing all these different things in the churches. So, uh, be obedient. Then, we have to be courageous. As Christians, we have to be courageous. In order to go and talk to a stranger about God and God's word, we have to be courageous. We have to be bold in his spirit. We can't be these frightened little people. Oh, I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to, you know, upset anybody. We have to make sure that we're being bold. We come in love always. Always come in love. But we have to make sure that we are not being fearful. The Bible says not to fear many, many times. And we do not want to go into a situation and be fearful. We want to be bold. We want to be courageous. We want to have faith. Our next point. We want to have faith that God said that he's going to do what he said he was going to do. So if God said whenever you lay hands on someone, they will be healed. Or when you lay on hands on someone, they will, uh, you know, get the Holy Ghost. You have to believe that for yourself before you can, you have to believe that. You have to have faith that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. 
don't doubt. You have to make sure that you are right there in line with God's word. Okay, this is what God's word said. Okay, I believe it. I have faith that God's going to do it. And then you go and you pray for that person. Uh, maybe you're in the supermarket and they need healing. And it's some random stranger. Pray for them. Have boldness. Have, have that uh, assurance that God is going to do what he said he's going to do. So uh, let's talk about those other things. Effort. Effort. When you're trying to attain a goal for God, for God and for the kingdom of God, you're going to have to make an effort. You can't just sit at home and think, well, when God you know, put, brings this person into my life, then I'll do it. No, you have to make an effort. You have to go, just like the person in the Bible the, the, that went out. He went and sought and he looked for people to bring into the house for the feast. You have to make an effort. You have to go and reach people and have to make that effort if you want to help the kingdom of God. You have to make an effort. You have to also use your skills for God. Uh, let's say that you can play the drums really well. Then use that skill for God's kingdom. Play the drums in church. Do something amazing with your skill for God. And don't uh, don't just let that go. Don't let, oh, well, this is a skill I have, I'm, I, but I'm, it's not really something I'm, I'm into anymore. No, use that for God. He gave you that skill. He gave you uh, the, the ear for music for a reason. Maybe you're a great speaker and the Lord has given you that ability to speak to people and talk, touch people and, and, and talk into their life when you're in a supermarket. Do that. If God gave you the, 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 the gift of gab, then use the gift of gab to reach people for God's kingdom. Uh, so use your skills. Don't just let them go idly by. Use your skills. Uh, so those are the five things, guys. Be obedient. Be courageous. Have faith that God's going to do what he said he's going to do. Use your effort and your skills. And you will, will attain all of uh, the goals that God's, God has in your life. Just like the people in the Bible. And there's many more uh, people in the Bible that use these same skills, and these same things in order to obtain these goals for God. These are just three examples. Uh, check it out for yourself. Go read the Bible. Guys, I hope you liked this video. If you liked this video, don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And I'll see you next time.